from Manhattan, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Summit New York City 2017. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. And welcome back here to New York. We're at the Javits Center here in uh, Midtown Manhattan for AWS Summit 2017 along with Stu Miniman. I'm John Walls. Glad to have you here on theCUBE. We continue our coverage here from New York City. Well, if you're making that move to the cloud these days, you're thinking about privacy, you're thinking about security, you're thinking about compliance, big questions, and maybe some big problems that Bill Shin can answer for you. He is the uh, principal security architect at AWS, and Bill, thanks for being with us. Thanks Good to have you here today. Yeah. A, a Cube rookie, right? This right. is uh, my first time. your maiden yeah. voice. First time for everything. Glad to have you, yeah. yeah so I just hit on some of the, the high points. These are big, yeah. big questions for the lot, a lot of folks, I would say. Yeah. Just in general, before we jump in, um, how do you go about walking people into the water a little bit and getting them sure. thinking, get their arms around these topics? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's still you know, among the first conversations we have with customers. It's, it's you know, our, our top priority at AWS is security and customers are concerned about their data security you know, regardless of where that data is and certainly when they move to the cloud it's a, it's a real opportunity to be more secure. Uh, it's an opportunity to kind of you know, think about how they're doing security and, and you know, adapt and be a little faster. Uh, so we have a, a really prescriptive methodology for helping customers understand how to, how to do cloud adoption and, and improve their security at the same time. We have a, a framework called the Well-Architected Framework, uh, and there's a security pillar in that framework. Uh, it's built around kind of five key areas. Uh, identity and access management, which is really what you should be thinking about first, because authorization is everything. Everything's code, everything's an API, so it all has to be authorized properly. Uh, then we move into kind of detective controls and talk about how the visibility and control and uh, you know, things turning on CloudTrail, you know, getting logging set up, uh, all the detective controls so that before you even move a workload into the cloud, you know, you know exactly what's happening, right? And then we move into infrastructure security, which includes kind of your network trust boundaries uh, and zone definition, things like firewall rules and load balancers and kind of segmentation, as well as system security, uh, hardening and, and uh, kind of configuration state of all the resources in their account. Uh, then we move on to data protection as we walk customers through this adoption journey. And things like encryption, backup, recovery, uh, you know, access control on data, and then finally incident response. We want to make sure that they have a really good solid plan for incident response uh, you know, as they begin to move more and more of their business into the cloud. So to help them wade through the waters, uh, you know, we bring it up, right? I mean, the CISO is, is a key partner in cloud adoption. Uh, organizations need to make sure security is in lockstep with engineering as they move to the cloud. So we want to we help with that. Uh, we also have the cloud adoption framework and there's a security perspective in that framework, methodology for uh, really, really treating security more like engineering these days, right? So you have DevOps, and you now you have DevSecOps, and you've got, you know, security needs to have a backlog, they need to have sprints, they need to have user stories. It's very similar to how engineering would do it, uh, and that way they're partnering together as they move workloads into the cloud. Amazon's releasing so many new features, yeah. it's tough for a lot of us to keep up. Uh, you know, it, it, Andy Jassy last year said, every day when you wake up, there's at yeah. least three new announcements yeah. uh, coming out, so it's a new day. It's a new the day. number of announcements in you your bet. space maybe yeah. bring us up to speed as to sure. what we missed if you uh, sure. just woke up on the West Coast. Sure, so. sure, <laughs> so customers love the pace of innovation, uh, especially security organizations, they really like the fact that when we innovate on something, means they, you know, they might not have to uh, put as much resources on that particular security opportunity or security concern. Uh, they can focus more on their code quality, uh, look for more on uh, you know, engineering principles, things like that. So today, uh, we happily announced Amazon Macy, so love it. It's a, a, it performs data classification on your S3 objects. It uh, you know, provides user activity monitoring for who's accessing that data. Uses a lot of our machine learning algorithms uh, under the hood to determine what is normal access behavior for that data. Uh, is, and it has a, a very differentiated uh, classification engine. So it does things like topic modeling and, and you know, reg regular expressions and a variety of other things to really identify that data. You know, people are storing trillions of objects in S3 uh, and, and they really want to know what their data is, uh, whether it's important to them. And certainly, you know, customer's data is the most important thing, right? So uh, being able to classify that data, uh, perform user analytics on it, and then be able to alert and alarm on inappropriate activity. So uh, take a look at Macy. Uh, really going to make a, a big difference for customers who want to know that their data is secure in S3. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I actually got, got a question from the community when okay. looking at Macy came out. Yeah. Uh, we got a lot of questions about GDPR okay, uh, sure. coming out. Yeah. So is Macy or the underlying tech, can that be? Yeah, absolutely a great case? tool. We think yeah. AWS is the greatest place to be, uh, you know, to, to 
perform GDPR compliance, you really got to know your data. You have to know, you know, if you're moving data by European citizens around, you really have to understand that data. Uh, I think it may still be a big part of a lot of customer strategy on, on GDPR compliance. But um, you know, to finish your, your question, uh, we've, we've announced quite a few things today, so at Macy's one of them. Uh, we announced the uh, next iteration of Cloud HSM, so uh, you know, cheaper, uh, more automated, uh, deals more of the clustering that you don't have to do, uh, deeper integration with things like CloudTrail. Um, customers really wanted you know, a, a, a bit more uh, you know, control and integration with the services than what the previous iteration was, so we've offered that. Uh, we announced EFS volume encryption too, so EFS, or uh, Elastic File System encryption at rest, it natively integrates with the key management system the same way that many of our services do when you're storing data. Uh, we announced some config rules today uh, to help customers uh, better understand the access policies on their S3 buckets. Um, yeah, good stuff. Busy day. Busy day. Yeah, I mean, I mean just from a uh, security standpoint, when you are working with a new client, do you ever uncover or do they discover things about themselves that sure that need to be addressed? Yeah, uh, I think you know the number one thing, and it's true for many organizations when they move to the cloud, is they want that agility, right? And and when we talk to security organizations, one of the, the top things we advise them on is how to move faster. Uh, you know, as, as as much as we're having great conversations about WAF and Shield, the web application firewall and Shield, our DDoS solution. Uh, Inspector, which performs configuration assessments, uh, all the, the security services that we've launched. Uh, we're also having you know, pretty deep conversations with security organizations these days about code star, code pipeline, code deploy, and the DevOps tool chains, because you know, if security can get that fast engineering principles down, then they're just as responsive. It also puts security in the hands of engineers and developers. Um, so you know, that's really you know, it's kind of the conversations we're having. And they, you know, they discover that uh, they kind of need to, to uh, get a little closer to how development does their business, you know, to talking in the same vocabulary as engineering and development. Uh, that's one of the things I think customers discover. Uh, you know, also it's a real opportunity, right? So if you don't have to look after a data center footprint and all the, the patch panels and switches and routers and firewalls and load balancers and things that you have on premises, it, it really does allow a shift in focus for security organizations to focus on code quality, uh, focus on you know, user behavior, and focus on uh, a lot of things that every CISO would like to spend more time on. Yeah. Bill, you know, one of the things a lot of co companies struggle with is you know, how they keep up with everything that's happening, all the change there. When I talk to my friends in the security industry, it's one of the things that they're most excited about is we need to be up on the latest fixes and the patches. Yeah. And when I go to public cloud, um, you know, you don't ask somebody, hey, what version of AWS you know, or Azure are you running right. on? It's, uh, you know, uh, you're going to take care of that behind the scenes. So yeah. how do you manage kind of the application portfolio for customers and get them into that framework so that they can you know, uh, we, we were talking off camera, Gene Kim, you know, just uh -huh. buy into that as security just becomes part of the process. Oh, sure. If I get more agile, so. Um, yeah, so the, the question is really about uh, helping customers understand all the services and really get them integrated deeply. Uh, a couple of things, so certainly the well-architected framework, like I mentioned, is helpful with that. Uh, we have solution architects, uh, professional services consultants, a, a very, very rich partner ecosystem that helps customers. A lot of training for security, there's some free training online, uh, there's, you know, uh, classroom instructor-led training as well, so that, that training piece is important. Uh, I think you know, the solutions are really, they're better together. So uh, we have a lot of great building blocks, but when you look at something like CloudTrail, CloudWatch events, and Lambda together, you know, we try to talk about the solutions, uh, not just the individual building blocks. I think that's one, one key component too to help them understand how to solve a security problem. You know, take for example, uh, monitoring the provisioning of identities and, and roles and permissions, right? We really want customers to know that that CloudTrail log, when someone attaches a role to a policy, you know, that can go all the way to a Slack channel, that can go all the way to a ticket system. Um, we really want to talk about kind of the end-to-end -end integration uh, with, with our customers. <coughs> and really to, to keep, help them keep pace with you know, our pace of innovation. Uh, you know, we really try to get, them, get the blog in front of them. The security blog is a great source of information for all the security announcements we make. Uh, you know, follow the follow Jeff Barr's Twitter. A uh, bunch of things to help keep pace with uh, with all of our launches and things. Yeah, Bill, you, you brought up serverless. Uh, yeah. If I look at kind of the container space, yeah, uh, which is related, of course. Uh -huh. uh, Security has been one of those questions. What what? You bring us up to speed as to where you are with security kind of containers. Yeah, Lambda. sure. I mean, yeah, I think uh, you know, Lambda's tenant isolation is very strong in Lambda. We have a really high confidence in the the tenant isolation model for those functions. The nice thing about serverless, right, is that when there, when there's no code running. 
you really don't have a surface area to defend. <laughs> and I think for a security perspective, if you were building an application today, <clears throat> and you go to your security team and say, well, I'd really like to just build these, this little piece of code, you know, these, and tie these pieces of code together, and when they're not running, there's, there's nothing there that you need to defend, or would I like to build you know, this, this big you know, set of operating systems and fleet management and all the things I have to do, and it's kind of a, it's a pretty easy conversation, right? Um, but you know, all the, all the primitives are there in, in serverless. You have strong cryptography, you know, TLS endpoints, you've got uh, you know, the, the IAM policy framework, so the identity access management has really consistent language across all the services, so principles, actions, resources and conditions is the same across every service. Uh, it's, not, it's not any different for serverless, so they can leverage the knowledge they have uh, of how to manage identities and authorization in the same way. You've got integration with CloudTrail. So all the, all the primitives are there, and then customers can focus on their code and, and being builders. So it sounds like that's part of the way to attack security for IoT then, if we're, if we're using Yeah, yeah I think for, for IoT, you know, it's a very similar architecture too, so you have this, you know, similar uh, policies that you can apply to what a device can write to in the cloud. Um, we have a, a really strong set of authorization and authentication uh, features within the IoT platform so that it makes it easy for developers to, to build things, deploy them and maintain them in a secure state. Uh, but you, know, you, you go back to the, to the, to the well-architected uh, framework and the, and the CAF, the Cloud Adoption Framework, and you take those five key areas, you know, identity, uh, detective controls, infrastructure security, data protection, and IR, incident response, you know, it's pretty similar across all the, all the different services. So. Just comes back to the fundamentals. It does, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, yep. And, and for customers, you know, those control objectives haven't changed, right? right. I mean, they have those control objectives today, they'll have them in the cloud, and we just want to make it easier and faster. Well, Bill, thanks for being with us. You bet, thank you Good very much. Good to have much. you on theCUBE. Look yeah. forward to seeing you again for the yeah. second time around. See you at reInvent, hopefully. Bill thanks. Shin from AWS Bye. joining us here on theCUBE, continuing our coverage from the AWS Summit here in New York in just a bit.